right, thanks for spending this sleepy afternoon after lunch with me. I'll try to make it worth your while. Um, how many of you here have heard of crowdfunding before? All of you, that's great. Okay, so um, today I will show you some tips and tricks on creating your campaign for your project. Uh, but more importantly, beyond just your school project, I think it's an important skill is a different part of marketing that you can learn as well. Uh, so before I proceed, I just want to show you a couple of videos of some of my favorite projects in Singapore. Lumen Bo is a company that has started to create goods that tell stories because we believe in more than just functioning products. I'm Fana, and I'm the founder of Lumen Bo. Take for example this bag from our debut collection. Remember the story of the man who told us. We reimagined it. A tale you find familiar, but with something different you get to encounter. Our version features a rematch between the two. And as you use the bag, you will discover the subtle and intricate details that reveal the story and the way it Data for my presentation because I have to stand in the frame. Can I have someone help me press my slide? Oh, okay. After the video. Oh, you did. Yeah. Sorry. This goes hand in hand with the delicate choice of quality materials and fine workmanship, which ensures an underlying quality that you can rely on. For instance, our first collection features the use of pull up leather. The oil I might need this video as well, right? Yeah, I can order it. I'll upload it. This not only adds character to each individual piece we use over time, but like our favorite stories, they become timeless. The gnome represents that element of fantasy. It's the part of the brand that harnesses your imagination. And that is that the bow, which paints the image of a dapper gentleman. Classic with impeccable taste. Together, the harmony of these elements makes up the brand and guides us in our design philosophy. For the past year and a half, we've been relentlessly searching for a reliable manufacturer whilst continuously refining our designs to meet the stringent standards we set ourselves. We are now ready for production, and we need your support to raise $50,000 to kickstart our first production run. We hope to realize this goal through all of you out there who believe in what we do. Here are two ways you can help. By checking out our exclusive, possible campaign and contributing to the No Man Book Dream, and secondly, helping us spread the word. With that, we hope you will help us take this next step so we can share our stories with so much more of you. Uh, how much money do you think he raised? Uh, he got... He got $30,000 in the last uh, weekend, which is pretty cool. It's actually our biggest fashion project ever. Uh, but, I mean, even if you're not interested in fashion, it's still an interesting um, entrepreneurship exercise, I think. Ah, sorry. Okay, I, it's okay. Can you just help me press when I show okay, um, you? Okay, so um, because you guys are all a lot younger than the average uh, people that I talk to about crowdfunding, I don't really have to explain very much else. You've probably heard of Kickstarter, you've seen really cool projects raise millions and millions of dollars. Um, Possible is actually the third largest platform in the world, and it's the largest one outside of the US. And we're also the only one which is officially available here in Malaysia. Uh, which is why I'm a professor, professor Mustaq told me uh, about your project. We thought it would be really interesting to try to do something together. So first of all, you should probably think about uh, crowdfunding and remove any ideas you have of raising a million dollars or more, right? These are the edge cases you see. These are those once in a lifetime products that look really cool. They're at the intersection of pop culture and technology and stuff like that. But for, for the rest of you, I think even the, the ability to raise a couple of thousand ringgit or even a couple hundred might be good enough and sufficient to do some of the projects that you have in mind, whether they are entrepreneurship ideas or small community projects that you want to run. So um, yeah, so what is crowdfunding? What is possible? This is just our 
front page, you'll see some of our really cool projects. You can browse it for inspiration. You can go through different categories. You can look at different geographical locations. Uh, more and more, we have had more projects coming out from this part of the world. Uh, we haven't had a big Malaysian one yet, but uh, in Singapore, we've had some really small, good ones and some really uh, big ones like that, that back project. But I think that as we spend more time here in Malaysia, we'll be really excited to see what kinds of creative projects and entrepreneurial projects you have here. Okay, so what is crowdfunding? Just very quickly, it's just the act of raising uh, a sum of money through a large number of people, usually through the internet, usually using uh, social media sources to tell people about it. So if you look here, uh, it's kind of dark, but this is actually our office in Melbourne. On a, we're on the second floor. Right, on the ground floor, we have a cafe, which is a not-for-profit social enterprise. They hire, they hire refugees to work in their kitchens, to work in their cafes, and essentially what happens is that they give them skills to do things uh, and to find work in Australia, in the F&B industry, uh, and they also give a huge percentage of the profits back into different charities around the world. So it's a really cool idea, but... Uh, they're not for profit. So when they wanted to raise money to expand their kitchen so that they could do more, uh, they raised $68,000 through us. Um, obviously, we're at a very different point in our development in Australia because we're so big and we're so um, common there that people know, even an average person on the street is familiar with us. So that's really the sort of culture that we want to create, especially here in Malaysia and in Singapore and other parts of Southeast Asia where traditionally to get access to capital is very, very difficult unless you have that access in the first place, right? Or if you're connected. So what can you crowdfund? You can crowdfund anything, uh, as, long as, it doesn't, as long as it doesn't contravene our guidelines or any legal uh, jurisdiction. Uh, essentially, that just means you can't offer a stake in your company, you can't offer a financial return, and you cannot definitely do things like child pornography and stuff like that. Um, but there are 20 different categories that you can crowdfund. The last one is other, in which anything can fall under. So basically, if you have a great idea, we probably like it, as long as they don't break any of those uh, guidelines that, we, that I just told you about. There's more information about that. Can you hear? Oh, okay. So there's more information about what you can and can't crowdfund uh, on our site. But in general, we are very, very flexible. So if you ever have any questions, you can just let me know in an email and I'll let you know if it's cool or not. Is this better? Can you hear? Okay. So anything from film to music to social enterprise to technology to journalism to food and drink. Uh, recently, we've had a couple of projects start on Possible and uh, people have started new alcohol companies on it, which did really, really well. There was a new gin called the Four Pillars Gin, which is like a craft gin. There are coffee cups which have been uh, crowdfunded. There are cafes which have been crowdfunded. Some of these people are saying that if you give me a certain amount of money, I'll put your picture on my wall in my cafe. And some people really like that. And I'll get to that part later, what we call rewards, okay? Yep. Uh, okay, so how do you start? First of all, you have obviously to find a project and then to set a target. A target is just a financial amount in ringgit or in dollars or in any of the currencies that we offer, which uh, you need to raise. So this is really important because you can't just put like, I want 500,000 because uh, you're not going to get anything if you don't hit that amount. We are an all or nothing platform. So if you need 5,000, say you need 5,000. If you need 500, say you need 500. Um, some of our platforms let you do the flexible funding model, but for us, we truly believe that to be as transparent as possible, uh, as well as to be as clear about your goals, uh, you have to be clear about what is the minimum amount you need to start your project. So find a realistic target and stick with it, and then work around that. You have up to 60 days to run your project. Uh, you can put any number between 1 to 60. So it's really up to uh, your requirements of your class about how much time you're going to get. I will work with Professor Mustak to, uh, to come up with a timeline for you. And we'll tell you more about that later. So essentially, no money changes hands until you reach your target. So if, say, you were raising 1,000 ringgit, right? Uh, at this point, your friend says, I'll give you 10. He isn't actually charged for it until the moment you hit 1,000. 
So in a way, it's not a refund. If you don't hit it, we don't even charge that money. Yep. OK, so this is a really interesting part, uh, probably the most important, called rewards. Rewards are essentially incentives that you can offer to your supporters so that you can encourage them to give more and to give now. OK, so if you think about it, if you're a really big fan of some pop musician right, or rock musician, uh, and if they said, hey, we're going to crowdfund, like some of our musicians in Australia have done, um, even if you are a fan, you probably might want to wait until the moment the album is actually recorded before you buy it. But crowdfunding lets people say, OK, I will give you money ahead of time because I'm getting something interesting in return, which is what we call a reward. So in this case, um, that band that you saw on our front page earlier, they were able to offer things like um, you can not only listen to the track while we're recording it, which was interesting for some music fans, uh, or for the very, very top tier reward, because they were big enough, they were able to say, for $5,000, I will come to your house and I will cook you a barbecue and sing your song. And there were other interesting tiers in between because they were able to do stuff like, um, for a couple hundred dollars, I will teach you how to play guitar or I will write you a song for you or your girlfriend. Uh, and people found that really cool because it's the sort of experience that you can't offer uh, to any, just anyone and you can't just buy it in a shop, right? It, you get access to something really interesting. So there are three kinds of rewards. The first one is a good or a service. And in the case of the band, a good or a service would quite simply be just a digital download or an album in physical form. It might even be a poster. It might even be an autographed postcard that it can send any, anywhere in the world. Um, these are the most basic things that you can offer, which is an actual physical good or service. But with that, it's also uh, the most expensive because you have to make it and you just factor in the manufacturing and the shipping costs, or you have to um, find a way to get access to a good or service if you're not already making something. So for some people, like you know, some of my friends have been raising funds for some uh, dog charities, for example. Um, you know, what could they possibly give? Um, they could get calendars, they could get postcards, they could do all sorts of things. But goods and services cost money, and you have to factor in shipping that you have to do yourself. Um, what is more interesting that, that really drives most of our projects is an experience. So if you're able to offer an experience that someone is going to want, this would be quite cool for them. So for example, recently I ran a project for myself uh, in which every couple of months I do this event in Singapore where I buy dinner for 200 people. Um, half Singaporeans and half migrant workers. And the idea is to try to get uh, everyone to understand each other's culture through eating of delicious food. And I crowdfunded and some of the experiences I offered were things like, um, and like a copy of a uh, DVD which my friend had made in Myanmar because we were fe featuring the Myanmar community at the time. Um, along with a Skype call to them so that they can find out more about the filmmaking process. People really like that sort of thing. Um, I offered a um, personalized guided tour of Little Myanmar, which is an entire building in Singapore uh, that people walk by but don't know anything about. So I was like, okay, if you give me a hundred bucks, I will take you on a walking tour of Little Myanmar, uh, show you where all the best places to eat are and what to eat there. And it also comes with a free flow of tea. So a lot of people actually really liked that idea because it was offering them something that they felt they wanted, which is to know more about something but with a personalized touch to it. So there are all sorts of rewards that you can think of. If you go on our site and you search for uh, maggots in Possible, there is a lady who needed money to buy 10,000 maggots or something like that because she was doing research uh, into some sort of disease. Um, and the reward she offered actually made people feel like, I, I want to support her because it was just so bizarre. She, she offered a maggot painting. So if you paid her 150, she would put, she would put maggots. Maggots are these little worms, right? Um, she would put them in paint and they would crawl around a canvas. And people actually bought them because they thought it was funny or they wanted to give it to their friends as a joke. So. <laughs> So there are really all kinds of ways you can be creative, all kinds of ways you can think about 
um, incentivizing people to give you more. So that's the second type of reward, which is an experience. The third one is uh, usually the most expensive uh, and the most limited, which is name recognition. So for example, if you're printing a book, right, you might want to say, uh, I will put your name on the credits page. Um, if you're doing an album or a, or a film, um, something that does really well for these types of projects on crowdfunding is if you said there's only one spot and for $5,000 or above, I will give you uh, executive co-producer credit, which doesn't actually mean or do anything, but some people like that anyway because they think that it's a way to buy access into IMDb. So um, name, name recognition is cool. Uh, people have put up their... their you know, supporters' names on the walls of the cafes that they fund. People have offered um, songwriting, personalized songwriting to, for, for supporters and their girlfriends, or personalized uh, dining experience with a celebrity. So there are all sorts of rewards that you can think of, and it's super important to get it right. Yep. Okay, so um, once you have a project, um, can you just put it online and expect contributions to come in? Uh, not really. So it's, you, th you have to think of it as if you're already so truly passionate about an idea, whether it was a cause or a product or whatever it is, you're probably going to be telling people about it in daily life anyway or when you're networking somewhere, you kind of want to do the same thing online. So even if you don't have a strong Twitter presence, it's fine. Right? Everyone in this part of the world has Facebook. Use it and use it and tell people about your idea. Show them the link. Uh, before you even start putting your campaign live, you should be making a list in an Excel sheet of all the people who are likely to want to contribute to you, as well as any press, any blogs that might be uh, interested in what you're trying to do. So when you have this list handy, you can then start reaching out to them. It helps a lot if you have a video which is three minutes or less because you, as you probably know, uh, people don't really read on the internet anymore and the video is a great way for, for them to see who you are, what you're trying to do and how and why they should support you. So the video really doesn't have to be a super professional video like the one I showed you. Um, if you browse through the site, you see that a lot of our successful projects have videos just shot with an iPhone, it's kind of shaky, someone's cat is meowing in the background, it's all fine. You just have to do a clear video where people can hear you and they can, more importantly, get to know you face to face and decide if they trust you or not. So you need to reach out and then also use social media at every step of the way to keep the message going. Okay, so very quickly, uh, I'm guessing most of you probably haven't heard of Possible until Professor Mustak told you about it. It's cool. Um, we, are, um, we were initially mostly in Australia, but now we are on a pretty aggressive uh, Asia expansion program. So Singapore and Malaysia were first in the last couple of months, and now we're growing into China. Um, we are, as I said already, the third largest in the world, right? Um, but that's not important. What's important is that we have funded more than 5,000 projects to a total of $20 million in the last three years. Um, and the number that we're really, really proud of is a 60% success rate. So this is the highest globally out of all the top crowdfunding platforms. Um, the rest are about 40, 39% even. Um, and the reason for this is because we really believe in building relationships with project creators like yourselves, right? So no matter what, if you're a student or someone who's starting a really big company and needs some funding, um, where they're helping you on every step of the way to make sure that you know what you're doing in a video, that you're doing your social media right, uh, that you're structuring your rewards properly. So this is the, probably the only reason why we have the highest success rate. Also, um, we, uh, we take a fee of 5%. Uh, that's our typical business model on top of the total amount raised, but only if it is successful. So we are super incentivized in every way, not just financially, but also by the sheer creativity that we see from project creators. Uh, and we really want to help make little dreams happen.
takes one. OK, so what works? Um, sometimes if you talk to people about crowdfunding, they're like, oh, great, I can get someone to fund my trip around the world. Right? That's not a good enough idea. But what is a better idea is if you said, I want to go on a trip around the world because I am an amateur photographer, for example. I'm not promising that it will work, but I'm just saying that you have to frame the idea uh, in a way that makes sense to people. And you want to go to this country, this country, and this country for this period of time uh, in order to produce, say, a photo book or a uh, web series or something, right? Whatever you think would work for an audience. So you have to have a good idea and then to make it as personal and as transparent as you can. So by that, that is best accomplished in the video. So you have two to three minutes to make that happen. Um, I think most of the time, the content of your video, not the production value, but the content is going to be what makes or breaks your campaign. Um, and as I said repeatedly, be personal, be transparent, let people know who you are, get a glimpse of your experience, your background. Uh, if you have none, that's fine. You just have to be honest. Uh, and to also have a clear idea of what you're trying to do. So try to sum up the essence of your project into a, a single line, right? Um, what we call in business and in tech, the elevator pitch. Um, and that's true not just for a crowdfunding video, that's true of any business. If you can define your idea in one line, that means you're more or less on the right track. And then you have to just mold the different parts around it. So, yeah, and then social media is super important. Coming to workshops like this uh, helps because um, you manage to put a face to the idea of crowdfunding. And at the end of it, I'll give you my personal email address. And you can reach out to me and say, hey, does this work? What doesn't, what, how can I improve it? So we really, really want to help make your project get off the ground and be as great as possible. Okay, next one. OK, so. Um, I'm sure you all have been to the Starbucks here. They, they've got these little cups that are kind of expensive and um, that, that lets you keep your coffee in coffee warm. Um, well, in Melbourne, we had a guy who loved coffee so much, um, and people in Melbourne love coffee, that he said, you know what, I can make a better cup. So he called it the upper cup, and he designed this, and he raised $66,000 in less than 60 days. So what's phenomenal about this is that um, maybe crowdfunding on its own isn't necessarily uh, the only way to fund a new business today, but it gives you an extra opportunity to think about your business or your idea in a different way. So typically what would happen is before crowdfunding made this possible, this guy would probably just be sitting around at home and be like, you know what, I, I like this cup, I should write a business plan, I should, I should submit some papers to the bank, I should find an investor and give equity in return for that, right? And then maybe design the cup and then think about marketing once I have that original sum of money to produce it. Um, so that whole process is just a really, really long process. But with crowdfunding, and the exact same thing happened with the bad guy as well, um, he was able to take his idea to market and say, I have this idea, do people like it or not? And so he set himself a target. So, you know, for him, the absolute bare minimum was X amount of money to start a production run. Um, same with the bad guy. And essentially, it's the sort of thing where if you don't have, you either have the money or you don't. But instead of borrowing that money, these guys are able to, to sell their products ahead of time, which is a whole new different uh, business model altogether. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then there are also little projects like you know, um, organizations that want to start uh, ground uh, ground up grassroots projects that um, may be too small for them to do themselves, but too uh, I mean too big for them to do themselves, but too small to ask for funding for from the government, and you know that would take too much time anyway. So projects like this um, are able to, you can just take an idea and start running with it. So they were able to set up a design thinking program in different schools across Sydney, um, when typically before they would have had to apply for a lot of grants and a lot of um, uh, funding for that. 
Yep. Um, all sorts of little projects like Wool for Women, you know, someone wanted to start a community employment and training project for women in Cambodia, and they did that. Yeah. Okay, this was our first uh, project that succeeded in Singapore. It was a pair of sisters who um, were really, really good at, screen, uh, at printing and they, they, set up, they wanted to set up an indie textile label, right? They're making beautiful bags, cushions and stuff like that. Um, and they, they wanted to raise 4,005, they raised 6,000. Uh, no, it's okay. Yeah. Um, you've already seen this one. He's, he's still got about 10 days to go. I think he might even hit 40 or 50. So uh, this is my own project, actually, um, the, the one that I told you about. Um, we hit the target, which is really small, because all I needed was the money to buy the food in uh, an hour. OK, so um, success like that really comes with uh, some practice. But for most people, you only have one chance at uh, doing a crowdfunding campaign well. So even if you have contributed to someone's campaign before, it's not likely that you know the ins and outs of exactly what you have to do to make it work. So in this workshop later on, I'll just very, very quickly run through some different aspects uh, that you should keep in mind. Um, later on, you should also look at uh, our website. On the footer, there is a possible handbook. There are some notes as well as tips as well as videos. So you can just go through all of that, and if you have any further questions, um, we can help you with your project. Yep. Okay, so um, just a few facts very, very quickly. Um, we have this no donation policy, uh, and what this means is, um, I think especially in this part of the world, a lot of people, whenever you think about giving people money online, you call it a donation, but that's not technically accurate because you're probably not a charity. Um, but what it is, is a contribution and it's a pledge because you're offering them something in return for it. Even if it's something as simple as $5 and I will give you a shout out saying thank you on Facebook. Um, that's still something you're giving in return. So it's not a donation. So for a lot of guys like, you know, I have a lot of friends who do stuff like dog or animal rescue. Um, they, they would be used to saying that I, I need an ongoing donation whenever you can, whatever you can. Um, but that's not what we do. We would say pick, uh, pick a project within your organization or within your sphere of influence or interest and um, do a project around it with a clearly defined start and finish and an outcome. Because it's really important that um, for, 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 for small project creators like yourselves, because you're not a charity, you're not accountable to uh, certain auditing processes. So it's not like you can say, I need X amount of money on an ongoing basis for my school fees, for example, right? But if you said, I, I am this person and I need this portion of uh, money because I want to sterilize 500 dogs uh, over Christmas uh, in order to give them better health care, you know, stuff like that. That would work much better than saying, I want the exact same amount of money, but not saying what exactly it's for. So you have to have a clearly defined start and finish. So if you were saying that you want to set up a company making cups, then that object itself is your outcome. Uh, and you either make the cup or you don't. For a lot of other projects, it might be a lot more vague, but you should define it as clearly as you can. And uh, wait, <laughs> okay. So um, there's this thing where uh, people think that if you get on, if you get mentioned on a front page, they think that the contributions and pledges will flow in. That's not really true because even though we have a lot of traffic on our page, the majority of your own campaign is still going to come from people that you already know. So you need to spend time thinking who in my immediate network is going to support me on this project, right? Is it, is it your mom? Is it your dad? Is it your, your friend who loves something that you love as well? Make a list of all these guys and put it on a spreadsheet and then reach out to them personally. So because the front page itself 
isn't the most important thing. Um, what's actually more important is what we call the 30% line. By this, and I think this is true of any crowdfunding platform of every single crowdfunding project in the world, um, is that 30% is the magic number at which uh, if you raise 30% of the amount you're asking for, that becomes the point after which other people are going to be interested in your project as well. And the psychology behind it is really simple. It's like you've probably all looked for a song that you like on YouTube and there are probably a thousand or a hundred or maybe even five copies of um, the same song, right? It could be exactly the same video, just a repost, but you're definitely going to click on the most popular one with a uh, hundred thousand views. And that's because people just follow what people are doing online. So the same way of crowdfunding, if you were to browse the site and if you were to see that, oh, there's a project, it's, uh, the deadline is in two days and um, it's only raised 10%. You're probably not even going to be bothered because you're like, you know, you're, you're already decided that oh it sucks or, um, or you're just thinking that it's not going to make it. So why should I do it at this point? So try to hit out of the gate as quickly as you can. Thirty percent of your amount. Do whatever it takes. You know, if if it's calling up people, uh, if it's getting press sorted out early, you have to do that just so that you get a thirty percent ASAP. Because past thirty percent, uh, your success rate as a whole grows up uh, grows exponentially like by a lot yeah and uh, yeah okay. okay so there's this thing that you are going to encounter when you start your campaign is what we call the U curve uh, again it's the same on every platform on every project um, and it's just the way human behavior is when you start your project you're gonna get all of your funds all your pledges uh, assuming that your idea is pretty decent at the start and then it's going to trickle in, it's going to trickle in, and it's going to go a bit flat. And then maybe you won't get any for a couple of days. Maybe you'll only get one or two once every couple of days. That's fine. What's more important is that it is going to pick up if you uh, spend a little bit of effort at the end trying to rally people around your, your, your target as well. So the majority of your funding is going to come at the start and at the end. So that's where you should pay the most attention. So try to get a 30 at the start and then uh, you know, try to keep some steady momentum and then at the end uh, try to get people around uh, the idea of helping you cross the line at the least. So that's really, really important. That's also why we do the all or nothing model because to us the last part of it is a little bit like doing homework. You know, if, if you have an unlimited amount of time, you're not going to do it. But if you know that you have to do it by tomorrow, then you're going to start. So, it helps to um, keep this in mind so that you're not too terrified when you're in the middle and you're like, oh, I'm not going to make it and you give up. It's not. It's, it's fine. It's, it happens to everybody, even to the people who raise millions of dollars. Okay, so this is interesting because um, crowdfunding is a primarily social dri media driven activity. Uh, people want to find out what you're doing, what people are contributing to. So 45% of your traffic is going to come from social media, majority of it being from Facebook, because it is people that you already know, right? Your friends and your family. But there are certain cases where if you were doing something in a very niche field, um, like certain areas of science or um, other things, um, maybe Twitter would be uh, more effective because you are able to find more people with like-minded interests to connect to. Okay, so um, the rest of it is just really just some basic information about us. We are in uh, Australian, we have a global reach, we're really focused on Asia Pacific now. We have multiple payment options for Malaysia, pr uh, primarily PayPal um, in transacting. So um, I know that a lot of people are asking whether there will be internet banking options because that's more viable. We will look into that, no promises yet, but that might be something that might come in the future. And again, we have the highest success rates uh, in different categories, predominantly the very creative ones because that's actually how we got started. But overall, our crowdfunding success rate is still the highest at about 60%. Yeah. 
So that's us. That's the team in Melbourne on a hammock. And yeah. And this is me. You can get my contact details from this screen or just drop me a mail or get it from uh, Hosseini or Professor Mustak. And um, just feel free to drop me a line. Um, later on, I will coordinate a separate session with them where maybe I can help you on a hands-on kind of way to put your project together. Yeah. So if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to ask me. Um, I, I can guess already that someone is going to ask what happens if you raise the money but you are unable to deliver. Um, if you raise the money you can't deliver, it is actually equivalent legally to saying that I will give you a PlayStation later on but then taking the money and not giving them that PlayStation. So uh, you need to be very clear about your uh, legal rights. Um, most of the time, if delays happen with our projects, it's not because of any outright desire to cheat because first and foremost, the majority of this money is going to come from people you know, right? Or at least a part of it. So you're not really going to be trying to rip them off. If there are delays because you just were delayed by some uh, hiccup, um, what you need to do is to be very clear, very transparent. You have to communicate. When you do a project, we have a dashboard that lets you look at uh, who are the people who contributed, how much they contributed, what are the details. Um, you can message all of them through our platform or you can write them individually and say, I know you gave me this money, I know this funded was funded on this date, I know I said this was going to happen on this date, but it's been delayed by a month because blah blah blah. And most of the time people are quite happy to, to see what you have to say and to give you the benefit of the doubt because we've all been there, we've all been that small guy trying to do something interesting. So just communicate a lot and you'll be fine. Anyone else have a question? Okay, so uh, it can be as long as uh, the person who pledges gets something in return, then yep. it's that okay already. Yeah, that's right. So as long as you do a um, a pledge, I'm sorry, as long as you do a campaign yep. uh, and you're not saying that I'm a charity, you can say that you are giving a part of it to a charity oh, but okay. so you have to make sure that makes sense the, for you to yeah, do the person who pledges will get something maybe a shout out at the Facebook page yeah. or whatever. okay yeah. then uh, one more thing like I said maybe I'm selling a product yeah so how will I know the addresses and everything okay so so um, because each reward is uh, when you set up the project you enter okay. the reward individually right okay so um, if it is an item that say a bag or right. a book that needs a shipping address there's an option where you check this one needs a shipping address oh. so anyone who selects that has to input it oh yeah. okay all right thank you uh, can you restrict um, who are the pledges uh, um, from certain ge geographical location? Um, that's not a feature that's uh, open or available on our site right now. Oh, okay. But maybe if there's a specific uh, need for you to do that, we could look into it. But what might make more sense is we have a feature called private crowdfunding. Okay. So what that means is it doesn't show up on the page. You just get the URL and you share that with your own friends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, can we can we edit the campaign after we started the campaign itself? You can edit some parts of it, but you cannot edit the title or the amount or the time frame. The amount. No. Yeah. Uh, so. So you. For you example, so you say you set ten thousand. After it's live, you can't change the amount. And you can't change the time frame as well, nice. but you can change the description. You can add something. You can add a new section. The rewards, maybe. Uh, you can also add more rewards later. Yeah. What if we come up with a product, but it has a copyright issue, or I mean, like we design a product, mm. but someone saw the product then. Um, about copyright? I think most of the time these concerns are uh, um, it's not to say that it won't happen but 
not just on crowdfunding but any kind of business right if you have an idea honestly there are very few original ones in the world it's all about executing and executing well so it's kind of like I some you know some people I know are like oh um, you stole my mom's nasi lemak recipe but I can make it better but if you've never made it ever how does anyone know so you have to do it and do it better yeah um, yeah let, let's say if I'm going to uh, make a film and I want to send like copies of the DVDs to my supporters mm -hmm. so um, how, how will I know their mailing system or mailing address or will, 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 will possible provide me the details of the um, supporters? Yep, so um, every time you start a project, there is a project management screen that shows you all of your supporters. You can um, download a copy of the Excel sheet that has their shipping address right. and you can ask them to provide a shipping address if it is a reward that needs shipping. Um, in terms of the costs, you should work out with your post service uh, what it will cost to ship different sizes uh, to different parts of the world and just to get a general uh, overview of the shipping fee. Yeah. Uh, I see, see. Um, so, rewards wise, it, it, it kind of can be anything, is it? Yeah, it can be anything. Um, I recommend that you look at our film category, like go to explore and then film and then pick the successful ones and then um, see what people have done so there are like really normal ones but there are also all kinds of innovative ones yeah um, like no, normally what how much do people budget for for film category uh, it really depends on your ambition so um, I mean there are films that have raised a hundred thousand there are films that have raised five hundred um, okay. It's really up to you. So um, you know, if it's something that you can do for a couple of thousand, then do that. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm. Yeah. I suppose that's all. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.